If you read caradvice.com regularly, you'd know that we've driven a pre-production version of the 2019 BMW X7, and now finally we can drive a full production version of the large SUV. Now you might be wondering why it's taken BMW so long to enter this segment. With the success of vehicles like Audi's Q7 in Australia, it would seem that buyers want large luxury SUVs and BMW could really make some inroads with this car. So, we're here in Louisiana in the deep south of the United States, not far from Spartanburg where these things are built, to test the new BMW X7. Here's our quick look at what we think of it on First Impressions. So obviously a lot of the focus has been the exterior of the X7 and how big it is, how long, the wheelbase, how much room it's got. But I think it's in here in the cabin where there should be the most focus. Now first of all, up front these displays are excellent. We've been using the satellite navigation a lot. It's fantastic, as is Apple CarPlay. It works really well and the interactive driver display I think is great too. This particular one that we're sitting in is a six seat model. Now that's under consideration for Australia. They haven't really made up their mind yet whether we'll just get seven seats or six. I love the six and I'd love to see BMW Australia bring it into the country because the two caps and chairs in the second row are excellent. And then through into the third row, you've still got plenty of room and a little bit of luggage space. So I think the X7, the cabin itself, is primed to be a real hit in Australia. So we know the cabin is a premium, luxurious place to be, and we love that six seat layout. Let's get that to Australia. On to the driving. Unfortunately, at launch, we didn't get to test the two diesel engines that we'll be getting in Australia when the X7 launches locally. However, the two petrol engines that we tested were both excellent. I think the biggest factor though, with the BMW X7, is the way that it rides and handles. First of all, the ride quality is really good. It's insulated, it's comfortable, there's not too much noise that comes into the cabin and it feels like a premium SUV. As you'd expect though, it does err on the side of being a little firm on awful road surfaces and that'll be interesting to test when we get the vehicle locally in Australia. That's where it's an interesting one because the X7 is after all a large SUV. Like an Audi Q7, it's not designed as a race car. So it handles well enough, but it's no sports car. In fact, at launch, we didn't drive on too many twisty roads to really push the handling as far as we'd like to anyway. But in terms of the way it'll be driven by the prospective buyer, I think it does the job nicely. There you go. I think the most impressive thing for me with the new X7 is the real difference that you can tell between this and the BMW X5. And in fact, that's a back-to-back -back test we'll have to run at Car Advice in the near future. Let us know in the comments section below what you think. But I'll tell you one thing. The kidney grille, which everybody talked about being massive and being huge, in the flesh, perhaps because the X7's so big itself, doesn't actually look that big. And I think it looks pretty good.